Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome back to another video, and we've reached a certain time of year again. We've got quite a few big updates to pass on to you today, but before we get into that, a few other things first. First off, the support that the channel has been receiving recently has been incredible. Earlier this year, I didn't think we were even within reach of hitting 50,000 subscribers, but thanks to your incredible support, we are less than a thousand away from that mark. And I really do think now by the end of this year, we can reach 50,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, really helps us out. If we can end 2024 with 50,000 subs, Oh man, that would just make me really, really happy for sure. And also, if you noticed on the community tab, I put to you that we were going to be doing a Q&A session because I do like doing the Q&As and I know you guys like to ask me some questions as well. So we're going to get through those first and then we're going to get to the big updates. So make sure you stick around. Just to say, I had so, so many questions thrown my way that realistically, I'm not going to be able to answer every single one here. I know that might be disappointing. I've tried to avoid questions that have been asked before in the old Sunday catch-up days. I've tried to go for questions that I think uh, like will be fun to answer or interesting to answer and not just like a yes or no or sort of a quick answer. I've just tried to cherry pick ones here and there. So if yours isn't featured, my apologies. But hey, I'm sure we might do some of these in the future. You might get to us then. So question time, kicking it off with Ariana's Drawing PH, who says, Hello, my dear mate. I hope you find also happy Halloween. I was posting this on Halloween for context. My, your question was, are you planning to go to Switzerland for next year's Eurovision in May if there's no controversy unlike the last season? Well, yes, uh, I actually am going to Eurovision next year with Becca, my partner. Again, we loved going to Eurovision this year that we just thought we have to try and go next year if we can. And luckily, we've managed to find somewhere in Switzerland, somewhere in Basel, where the, city, where the contest is taking place to stay. Uh, we're hoping to do a sort of similar thing to last time. We'll be around for the two semifinals, but we'll be back in the UK for the time of the final itself. JJ Goodman says, are there going to be Doctor Who viewing figures for the modern series? Ah, I love this old chestnut. Well, yes, I always say hopefully. I, I'm not amiss that next March, March 2025, is the 20th anniversary, madly, of when the show came back under Russell T. Davis the first time. So it would be nice to try and get a video on Series 1 to, tie it, to try and tie in with that. I'm not making any promises, right? I'm not making any promises, but that would be an interesting one. I've always wanted to continue the series, but there are a lot of work. And when you get into the modern series, there's even more data, even more things to sift through. So eventually is the answer i think we're looking for glenn skywalker 2305 says question fitting for halloween what are some of your favorite horror slasher movies what was your first one i genuinely can't remember what my first slasher or horror film even was but i'm a big fan of like the old halloween films mainly like the original texas chainsaw massacre as well the original one of that is great but i think in terms of horror one of my favorite franchises is the saw franchise particularly the first seven when they were coming out one a year i think when you watch them quite close together they actually tell this really coherent story the ones after seven have been a bit hit or miss but that those original batch pretty pretty good brodie's hot wheels sonic and fa 80200 i said that right you've got a few questions here i'll try and breeze through them why was sonic the hedgehog saying you're too slow in the cfax video wow that's a deep cut you're going back to 2017 for that why does he say you're too slow i think it's because i start playing rhythm is a dancer my theme tune at the time and still is in a way but then I said you're too slow and replaced it with a more like funky, slightly faster version. Or was it faster? I don't even remember. But that's why it was there. When are you going to do an explanation of how America and Japan switched to color TV? Eventually, you know, I'd love to cover more and more countries' journey to color TV. They were really great videos to make uh, last year, the ones that I did. You know, we covered uh, Germany, we covered Sweden, we covered Israel, to name a few, Norway as well. So I'd love to do more, but again, we'll find the right time. And you stop making the video game collection videos for a while now. Are you going to make an update video on those old videos? Wow, again, another deep cut. With video games, I still enjoy my video games, but I don't have nearly as much time to play or enjoy them. And I have slimmed my collection down quite a lot from long, long ago. So I don't really feel with what I've got now, doing a video game collection updates really worth it for want of a better word, but I don't know. Maybe. Seamless Shelf 35 says, looking forward to Sonic the Hedgehog 3. If you mean the movie, 
Yes, absolutely. I, I really enjoyed the first one. The second one was a good fun as well. And if they carry on that trajectory, really interested to see how shadows are going to be integrated into the story. So bring on December 20th. I'm ready. You have Marcus Jackson, 9076, who says, you may have answered these in videos, but do you have any favorite adverts? I don't live in the UK and occasionally watch them for nostalgia. I usually watch adverts from the 2000s. So any favorite adverts? I mean, I grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s, and some of those early ones uh, that I remember at least are really great. The ones that were over the top, like Juicy Drop Pop, and usually for sweets or candy, you know, they were always really over the top adverts. Looking back, though, once I've covered, I love the Nescafe Gold series, you know, the romance between the two that took place over years. That was such a fun little series to delve back into. Got a few here from Gracie Lynn, who says, I've been enjoying your content quite a bit lately. Thank you. I find British TV really interesting, says the American, and I like learning more about it and its history. You have a couple of questions. Firstly, what's your favorite video that you've put out on your channel? Oh, a favorite video. I don't think I have an all-time favorite. I've got videos that I was certainly very proud of, like the 100th episode of the iDent review. I was very proud of that. A lot of the little documentary videos I've made. Like, I remember I did one two years ago now on the London Boys, a little known 80s pop group. That was a real passion project of mine to do. Yeah, a lot of the documentaries I'm quite proud of, to be honest. Yeah, I think they're probably my proudest work. Are you going to keep doing the Video Scary series? You see, I did a Video Scaries episode this year, Hospitals Don't Burn Down, and it tanked. Like, hardly any of you watched it, which is fine. It's not for everybody. It's a lot darker. I mean, that's the whole nature of Video Scaries, but I think I, I'm, I'm veering into, I do videos on darker topics, like recently we've had, you know, the instance involving, say, Tommy Cooper or the Late Late Breakfast Show incident involving Michael Lush, but I felt I didn't need to put them under the Video Scaries banner, they could just be their own thing. So, in terms of doing more videos that maybe are a bit darker or cover darker themes or topics, yes, more of those are definitely plausible in the future, but as to whether they'll be under the Video Scaries name... I'm leaning more against it, but never say never. And what's your dream video? The one you've always wanted to make or the one you're most proud of? I talked about uh, the ones I'm proud of. The one I want, want to make the most. I I'll tell you what, I did have an idea before last year, before I did the videos covering countries moving to color TV. I literally wanted to do a video where we went through every country in the world and talk just a little bit about their introduction to Colour TV. And I actually got as far as writing a script, recording audio, but admittedly, a lot of the information I found at the time was from Wikipedia, which I'm sure anyone knows is really flexible, really, and I didn't want to get a lot of things wrong. And it just became a bit unwieldy, so that's why I started doing Nations individually. But maybe... Maybe I should make that. That would be a long video, but maybe. Maybe that would be worth it. We have Alvin is here who says, Hey, Adam, if you had a TV channel, what would it air and design like the channels, blocks, and content? Well, in terms of airing, probably a lot of the stuff I cover now, like more nostalgic stuff, but I'd, I'd like to do some new stuff as well. I'm very much into movies and music, maybe reviews of current stuff or showcasing newer stuff. I feel the design, it's got to be either sort of a homage or a modern evolution of some of the classic idents I've talked about and covered. I mean, my current branding is, you know, very much echoing the BBC of the 1970s. So something like that perhaps would be quite fun. Nicholas Caligris 9985 says, where do you see television and radio transmission in Europe going in the future? Very interesting question. I think radio is always going to stick around in some way, shape or form. For all the people out there who say radio's dying, radio's dead, radio doesn't have a place, it has persisted now for well over 100 years. So I think we are going to have radio in some form or another. As for television, I mean, we've talked about it a lot in the discussion videos that I do, but I do think TV will stick around, but I think certainly in the next 20, 30 years, it might be radically different from where we are now, and that might take a lot of time for people to get used to, but sometimes, you know, when the hand of change comes sweeping by, you can't really do much about it. Ben Freeman, 4489, says, What are your plans for future documentaries? Oh, God, honestly, I've got a little list. There are some ideas. I don't really want to spoil all of them here. I have got a few ideas, which is good, because trust me, sometimes there are no ideas. But no, I do have a few ideas of stuff I want to make as to whether or not they'll come out soon or later. Again, stick around for that, that update, because it's a coming. You have Pelican Bowling, who says, Hello, Adam, I do have a more fun question. When, uh, when working, do you prefer pencils or pens? Personally... I prefer the taste of the pencil, wood, and graphite. However, occasionally I will drink the pen ink. I'd, hmm, I don't think I'm going to do either of those. don't think I've ever 
done any of those in terms of taste. Jack Griffin, 1351, says, Hello, Adam. Seeing as you're a massive film and music collector, do you also have a video game collection? I touched on it a bit earlier, but I used to have quite a big video game collection across various different consoles from the early days of the Atari 2600 to NES, SNES, Nintendo 64, Sega Mega Drive, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, really covering a whole breadth. I was really into that sort of the end of the naughty start of the 2010s. That was like my peak video game interest. But as time's gone on, I've not fallen out of love with it, but it's become less of an interest for me. And again, I've slimmed down a lot of my collection. In terms of what I've got now, it's mainly the stuff I had as a kid. So PS1, PS2 stuff, bunch of Xbox 360. I have kept the Atari stuff though, because I really love the Atari stuff. I feel it gets overlooked quite a lot, but that's the bulk of what I've kept. Matthew Payton says, what do you think of the new deal or no deal? I haven't watched it. <laughs> you did well on Potmaster TV. Would you do it again? Uh, well, absolutely. It was a really fun experience, really nice and chilled out. I'd happily do Potmaster again or any other quiz show. So, you know, if anyone out there is listening, please, uh, I'll, I will come on your program and hopefully not make a fool of myself. And would you like to appear on Doctor Who? Oh, of course. You know, actor's dream, a personal dream as well. I'm very grateful to have appeared on it. Uh, you know, with Big Finish in the audio world with the Ninth Doctor. But which also reminds me, I'm going to be in a new Big Finish. It's coming out in December. The box set's called Unknown Soldiers. I'll be starring alongside Jonathan Carley, who does the War Doctor, the early War Doctor. And the story features Daleks. So make sure you check out that set if you want to hear me do some more Doctor Who-ish action. Brandon Foley, 87, says, You've been very successful with the growth of your channel and your fan base. My question is, if you could go back in time to when you were just starting your channel, what advice could you give your younger self? Hmm, let me think. Don't record on a really bad phone camera? I understand. I, I, I was the same when I was starting out. A lot of us don't have a choice. You're using the phone you've got. But no, use a better camera. Set it up properly. Don't let it shake about. Don't have the flash on. For God's sake, do not have the flash on. It, it just don't look good. Uh, maybe be a bit more consistent with uploads. Be a bit more inventive back then. Invest in actual editing software back then because I didn't use to edit in the earliest days. UK Comedy Viewer says, have you seen Ghostwatch and would you consider making a video about it? I haven't seen Ghostwatch. I've heard everyone, including a lot of you lot, talk about Ghostwatch and how legendary it is. From what I gather, it'd be a great thing to talk about around Halloween time, naturally. But maybe next year if I can get around to watching it. Richard the Film Geek 2.0 says, Hello Adam, I'm really liking your content. Do you intend to review more shows and or movies in the future? I'd love to do like movie reviews, TV show reviews. I mean, I love doing the unboxings, the third man unboxing I did recently that Studio Canal sent. I love doing that. I'd love to do more things like that. I know it's not necessarily an interest to uh, some of you guys out there, which is completely fair enough. But no, maybe next year I will move into doing more movie reviews or maybe hauls of things I pick up, stuff like that. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Mark C5111 says, Hey Adam, I just wanted to say I really loved your historical TV related videos and hope you keep on doing them. Also a quick question for you. If you could do anything, what would your dream job in television be? Oh, well, thank you for the kind words about the channel. What would I'd love to present something, you know, I'd love to present a show, mainly something about like the history of TV, sort of like what I try and do on here. I'd love to just present or narrate a program like that. That would literally be a dream come true. And if it was to air on, say, one of the main UK broadcasters here, like BBC, ITV, Channel 4, etc., that literally would be a dream come true. Galloping Sausage, great name by the way. You say, have I got any ideas for videos? You want your channel to have a healthy amount of variation of video topics, but you don't know what topics you want to do or what I do with them. Yeah, trust me, getting ideas is difficult. I'll literally have like October, the last month, flurry of ideas came thick and fast. And sometimes you'll find doing one video often leads on to you thinking, oh, I could do this as well, you know, sort of makes a snowball of ideas. So if you have those drought periods, don't worry. It's okay. It's natural to have, you know, I, I think I'm coming up to one now for various reasons. Don't worry, we're getting there. q and A's nearly over. I think just have a browse. You know, if you've got an interest, even if it's like a vague thing, do some initial research, do some digging. And then, because sometimes I'll read articles that I'll have no intention originally of making a video on, but then if it sparks my interest and I feel there's a fair bit to say about it or something like that, then it'll get me going. Or I'll have a look around at what you've got. If you've got something in your collection, whatever collection that might be, that might spark your interest to create something. And that's what's happened to me before, so best of luck to you. Andres Bravo, 2003, says, are we ever going to see more weird kids TV stuff? Oh, I'm pretty sure you will. There's a lot of weird kids TV stuff out there. And the stuff we've looked at this year, you know, the tweenies, Teletubbies, Pingu, etc. That's been great fun. So yes, you're going to see some stuff uh, hopefully next year. 
And finally, Jenny Anti says, when and where are you in Panto this year? That's a great question, Jenny, because it ties in to the uh, big announcements I've got. I did announce earlier, I think, on the channel in a video in the past that I will be in pantomime again this year. I'm going to be in Jack and the Beanstalk. And as to where, it's going to be at the Cast Theatre in Doncaster, which is where I was last year. Returning to the theatre, returning with some of the fellow creatives, which is going to be a great time. In terms of the performances, it's going to run from the 29th of November until the 5th of January next year. So we're doing a bit of a longer run this time. So you've got a whole month and a bit. If you want to come see me, if you live near Doncaster or around Doncaster and you've got some free time, check out the cast website. They've got all the listings on there. We're doing 61 performances in total. So that's a lot of opportunities. If you're free, if you want to bring your family, if you want to bring some friends, or if you just want to come yourself, swing on by, uh, you know, let me know somehow via socials. Let me know that you're going to come on down. It'd be great to see some of you there. So that's your answer to your question, Jenny, but just more broadly. So Panto starting again, for those of you who were around last year, you'll know that might mean in terms of video uploads on the channel, we're going to be heading into a bit of a drought. And that's, you know, not for want of trying. It's just Panto is very all-consuming. We've got a two-week rehearsal process where I'm going to be in five on the second week, six days a week, pretty much all day. It's going to be a lot of singing, acting, dancing. Dancing takes it out of you, man. Don't let anyone convince you it doesn't. It does. And I remember from last year, I come home naturally feeling very tired, very exhausted. So the impetus to make more YouTube videos sometimes was a bit of a struggle. We did get some videos out, but it was only a small handful. And the, the things that normally come out on the channel, like the ANTV Christmas message on Christmas Day, the here's to whatever years coming up on New Year's Eve, they're likely still going to be, you know, they're staples. I like to get those out. They'll probably be filmed before their time but in terms of you know the documentaries the unscripted stuff that i'm just going to say it now there's going to be less of it going through november and december and i know that's a shame to a lot of you and i completely understand it's a shame to me as well if i had unlimited amounts of energy or if there was more time in a day i would happily go and perform for several hours on stage and then come and work on uh, youtube videos but the the true re fact of the reality is i can't do that so i'm just mainly preparing you now that there is going to be less content coming through November and December. I am going to try and push a bit more than last year. I think finding my footing with Panto last year and the schedule and the demands, I feel this year I'm sort of a bit more prepped both mentally and physically. I can sort of manage that time a bit better. That's not a promise. That's not a guarantee. But hopefully I can crank out more than what was it last year, like five or six videos across November and December. I'd like to anyway. I've already got an idea for one or two videos that could be quite like quite hefty as in may potentially maybe more than half an hour long just saying so hopefully you'll enjoy that if we get round to it but no I'm, I'm not abandoning the channel it does coincide though with another big uh, thing that I've mentioned before is that I'm uh, moving house me and Rebecca have bought our first home together which is really exciting and we're expecting to move into that house sometime within the new year and as anyone who's moved house will tell you that comes with a lot of uh, that comes with a lot of time taken up. It comes with a lot of stress. So while we're in that house move period, again, if it falls in, say, January, January might also be a bit slow on the uploads just because of, of life happening. I will try and keep you updated as best as possible because I feel that's only fair. And obviously, uploads will eventually resume uh, on the channel. Uh, but again, uh, uh, at the same frequency, who's to say? It's been a really fun year on YouTube this year for me in terms of creativity. Particularly this last month, the more documentary style stuff we've been coming out with has really made me happy and clearly made a lot of you happy as well. So I'd love to continue on that trend and evolve some things and, you know, do some more do some more ideas that maybe I haven't dabbled with before. We'll see. But yes, that the main thing I wanted to tell you was that November and December might be a bit quieter for uploads. It's not going to be completely deserted, but it's going to be a bit quieter. Just letting you know that off the bat now. And then with the house move, we might also encounter a similar thing. But this is... For me, it's all positive, guys. It's not in negative circumstances. It's all in positive circumstances. And I can only just say once again, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support, all the kind words, all the likes, all the comments, all the new subscribers who've joined the channel in the last few months. Quite a few thousand of you. I hope you have been enjoying it and will stick around with us through the end of the year and into... 2025. But yes, that is all for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it. It really helps us out. And subscribe to the channel as well because we'd love to have you aboard. And let's hit 50k before the end of the year, eh? I know we can do it. I know we can. The time I'm recording this, I think we're about... We're just over 700 away. It's definitely doable. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. In the meantime, I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for joining me. And I'll see you next time. 
Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show, and a special thank you to Macra, Bruce Danton, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, Dord Khan, Liam Domain, AJ Mac 200017, Deck, Jen, Traffy, Tim Ripley, Mr. Eurovision 1986, Ted Elliott, Marnanel Thurman, John Wakefield, Kieran Bolton, 40 Something Manchild, Jerry Ralph, John McLeod, Subs Khan, Saint Rocket 9, James Wallace, and Ben, our AMTV staff members.